scapulocarpus muscle and behind the spine of the scapula in the lateral view here we have the infraspinatus muscle these two muscles start from these two fossae and insert to the greater tubercle of the humerus i will show you some slides you know to understand exactly what i am talking about but let's just be before we move to the slides remember that this projection here in the middle which we may see we may be able to see on live animals or live horses this is the spine of the scapula and the sweeney syndrome here and because of the atrophy of the supraspinatus muscle and infraspinatus muscle so we can easily see the spine of the scapula more than normal more than normal let's move to the slides now to show you the anatomy firstly of this region and show you the muscles and the reason behind the atrophy of these muscles uh, which is actually the damage of a very important nerve uh, responsible for the innervation of these two muscles called the suprascapular nerve let's move to the slides so as we mentioned here in this region here we can find what's called the scapula so the scapula is the bone um, the proximal bone of the skeleton of the forelimb which forms with the humerus the next bone what's called the shoulder joint in this case, in the lateral view, we have uh, in the middle here what's called the spine of the scapula. In front of the spine of the scapula, there is space, there is fossa, depression, where we can find this muscle. This muscle is the supraspinatus muscle. Supraspinatus muscle starts from this region here and inserts to the greater tubercle of the humerus and partially on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Uh, behind the spine of the scapula there is another fossa here called also the infraspinatus fossa from the infraspinatus fossa there is another muscle called it has the same name the infraspinatus muscle start from the fossa here from the scapula and inserts to the greater tubercle of the humerus these two muscles are innervated by a nerve called the supra, uh, supra nerve to be able to understand exactly what we are talking about, uh, uh, let me just show you what will happen if we remove the skin from this region. If we remove the skin, this is what we can see. The muscles we talked about, the supraspinatus muscle is here, the infraspinatus muscle is here, but it's covered by the deltoid muscle. Just forget the deltoid muscle for now. Remember the two muscles and this is the spine in the middle exactly cranial cranially here from the medial side of the scapula or from the medial surface or medial side of the shoulder joint we have a nerve this nerve comes from there and gives branches to both muscles and innervate these two muscles this nerve called the suprascapula nerve it's one of the nerves of the brachial plexus so as you can see here in this view, this nerve located here just under the skin, just under the skin, and that's why any uh, hit on this area by another horse or even by the owner will cause or can cause damaging of this nerve, the suprascapular nerve. And if this nerve is damaged, that means these two muscles, they don't have any innervation anymore and that's why it will cause like atrophy or atrophy of these two muscles atrophy to understand what will happen if we have atrophy of these two muscles we need to remember the knee the function of these two muscles these two muscles are very strong and one of the function of these two muscles is to keep or to fix the shoulder joint laterally so that means if there is atrophy of these two muscles, the shoulder joint is really not fixed and there is lameness and uh, the horse cannot walk or run normally. So please remember to protect this area, not to hit the horse at this area here, because exactly under the skin there we have the nerve. For the treatment, uh, giving non-stereoidal anti-inflammatory drugs plus massage of the affected area 
to stimulate the muscle regeneration could help of course a lot and of course don't forget to remove uh, of the primary 